Ooh. Oh. It's alive, it's alive. Well, sort of, hold on. Almost ready to start. I normally don't uh, come back to streaming this early after a last stream, but I'm so into Disco Elysium right now that I feel like I, I feel like I have to, because uh, I really, really want to. <sighs> and instead of waiting for anybody to drop in, if they particularly care I'm probably just gonna go right into it because fuck I want to I want to find my house I think that's first order of business is I want to find my house and uh, the map isn't as big or as open as I thought it was going to be which is a relief first of all oh shit we're here Give me those things magnesium nice Hey kid. Trying to sneak up on me. Come to slit my throat in my sleep. You're not Lord sleeping. Kira. She's not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. No. Why are you sneaking up on me like that? It's not a good idea to scare me, pig. Not a good idea at all. Okay, fuck. I don't I don't care. What's that? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Whoo! I can try and conceptualize it. You have if I roll a nat 12. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Montanese. Weather wall. Cracked. They're paint peeling. Hmm. How interesting. I love that this highlights all interactables. That's a good button. Good solid button. Garden hose won't be used till snow melts. Chairs and tables eaten by rain and rot. Another splattering of bullet holes on this wall. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. You examine closer faded marks in the stone they peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes sweat starts trickling down your brow your chest feels tight looking at them it's closing in oh my god in pain threshold ever tighter. you okay there huh yeah yeah you're looking there for a second what are you looking at Remnants from the revolution. What's with the These bullet holes? Half a century old. Okay, half a century old. No, we are not constructors and renovators. And these bullet holes do not warrant an investigation. What well, can you tell me about the revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Should we go? <sighs> Can't believe that fucking hurt me. <laughs> Damn it. What's that? Oh, I got another healing item out of it. And a hat. Ooh, I got a hat. Hell yeah, hobo hat. What's it do? Plus one reaction speed, feeling twitchy. Minus one rhetoric, bum brain. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I'll do bum brain. Closed door, but I'll look at it suspiciously. Is that all I can do with it? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I can't get that 
quite yet. I could probably try again since I talked to Kuno about it. There must be another way into the building. I'm here with the video yard and the hanging. Ah, somebody might know. Can't go in there. Whoops. What the hell is this? Is this blood? Signal blue naval coat. Is that another thing I can wear? Off of serial poise. Plus one suggestion. I, Captain. Huh. <laughs> oh no. I like my jacket. I like my disco has blazer a lot more. <laughs> Classic double breasted coat suits everyone, including you. You ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship? Coat's heavy fabric has got your back, even if maws are with few holes in it. Nice. Cape side apartments. Rue de Saint Gislaine, round about north. Bottles. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? Hey, up here, Pico. Motorcycle in repair and the tools used to assemble it. Huh. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Talk to me. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. This is the police. The police? Everyone knows the police don't come around here. Alright. I'm not no. joking. <laughs> I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door. They must be <sighs> yeah, all right. to the east. Kim, tell her we're real uh, policemen. I assure you, we are real police officers. <laughs> there is no reply. Just faint sweeping sounds inside. Mm. Great, love it. There's more construction here once, decades ago. Ah, I love just getting shit from random boxes. Belly of the boat shines like it was recently painted. Ooh. Docking reserved for residents of Rue de Saint Gislaine, 33A. Room in the whirling is much bigger than the sloop. Worth more than you'll ever earn in your life. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Hello, Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines. The owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Joyce L, what exactly is the RCM? I remember hearing it from somewhere. We don't know what that is. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Ah, good. <laughs> she meant it in jest. Uh, let's shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. I was dispatched to handle a strike. Not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. Great. You'd be Thank the first. Here, madam. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate... Disregard the hobo hat, please. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? <laughs> We're becoming friends with Kim. Yeah. A swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. 
Tell me about the wild pines. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for wild pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. Um, what do they do? The pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. Okay. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revachonian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Interesting. Song Baptiste, L U M. An unknown entity known as Brightest Star. You're in good company. Why, thank you. How much money? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. Money I owe is so much less than that. And to think, there are years when the group books losses in the billions. If it's a sloop, she grabs some main safe balance. Walpines employ 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. Walpines get all these billions. It started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago. When pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lorman Tang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. My lizard brain is not registering any of this. I'm super bad at it. Um, yeah, probably let's start with more yeah, Royal Monopoly. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. What, a, what is a huge system one with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo. Uh, you don't keep a move the workers do. Company is nothing without them. We built this district. Oh, she didn't like we, that. There it is. She owns up to it. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislaine with its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. Which points behind you where the seawall rises? Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revachonian employees. A company getaway for a weekend or a summer holiday. Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. Tell me about the strike. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Uh, what if I want to hear about these trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. <laughs> Wouldn't want to disturb an octopus, better leave it be. <laughs> I will slay such an octopus. It's only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. Yeah, I'm, I, I know. <laughs> Shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. 
What's your role in this? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. Mm. How are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago after that awful lynching took place. Wait, she just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a two meter twenty racist behemoth blocking the gates. Yeah, I, I, I talked with him. Uh, yes, I believe there is a connection, but that's a subject for later. Oh, okay. Uh, tell us about this behemoth. What can I say? The union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Oh yeah, the supremacists. I remember that guy. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. Right. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. Yeah. I took okay. over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike. Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. Hey, that's not bad. This time their demands are more. I guess you could say, aggressive. Ludicrous, Eva. It's meant. Um... What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What do they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. Oh! Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Not hard communist enough for me. <laughs> Personally, I agree. It lacks the pizzazzo of every worker a member of the board. Oh, uh, what exactly do they mean by it, though? It's What's the demand? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Okay. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines group. King is dead. Long live the workers. That may be <laughs> yeah, communism it's trophy. Decide who is king, but as negotiations go, it's not a swell start. So what are you gonna do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up. Just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched. I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear? <laughs> oh, breakthrough imminent. I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. I think I talked to that guy, right? This checks out. Uh, what happened to this Gaumont? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is <laughs> a statue, you see. Alright then. Yes. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before. And who was more than fair with him and the union. Uh, scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the union refuses to? Don't let her answer it herself.
Let's call them strike breakers. If these strike breakers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Good shit. What about the union boss, Mr. Clare? Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. That fact. Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine oh. he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Can't be that bad. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen. Oh. And I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. There are two of them? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see. With a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much wow. of their workers' dues. About the union itself. Dave Ardair's union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The debardeur are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Oh boy! Can't wait to do that! Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only... What time is it? It's like 424. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask? I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Dave Ardeur's union is... I mean, if they're a mob, I want to. I want to agree with Kim here. Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. Uh, you said something happened in the election. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the union. She disappeared. Disappeared. Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. This form, her name? Uh, what's her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just four women in private correspondence. Polly. I don't even know if it's a sir or given name. And I don't have access to the union's files. Some kind of extortion, probably. Indeed. The company suspects foul play, but there's nothing they could do. It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around Claire's. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern. We'll be just fine. All right. Of course. How else can I help? Oh man, there's so much dialogue here. Talk to me about the lynching. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Uh oh. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Remember when a partner <laughs> told you recently something from a usual medical episode? Uh, my lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? 
Uh, it's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all my memory and my life and the world. Uh, I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world is said nothing. Uh, yeah, let's just be honest. Oh, dear. <laughs> Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. <laughs> don't, I don't even, even know how to respond. <laughs> I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. As far as we know. <laughs> of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Okay. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. How do I negotiate my way out of this? She's hey! Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. So there's some other way to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in. But expect her to drive a hard bargain. Yeah. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. Right. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Okay. Or you can recover your badge, though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Yeah. Hold on, my breakthrough. Mazovia, socio-economics. Nord, point, nord, 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil, child-murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit-eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He has started to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over personally with his socio-economic theory. It has do I have minus one to visual calculus and authority? Oh no! <laughs> university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, the left-wing dialogue actions give me plus four XP. Duplicitous world. <laughs> Holy shit! Awesome. And I can't forget any of these. Oh, incredible. <laughs> oh no, not my visual calculus. Oh, this is fun. Look at all. Oh. Alright, Kim, what you got to say? How'd you open we go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchman. Really? I thought it was going okay. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her head. Ah, dang it. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. Company must have more ears on the ground. She could have known about my condition. Uh, what do you propose? That we don't investigate the drug trafficking? Just now, find my badge. No. <laughs> if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union. Or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate. Briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the DJ. Hmm. Company must have more ears on the ground. She could know about my condition. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come off as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional. Alright, let's get back to her then. I like you, Kim. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh, you're on a boat. Uh, let's say, say this later. 
Tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, man? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Uh, materials come from Samara to Revachol through the terminal? Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Okay. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everard and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Mmm. The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Mm. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Okay. The union secrets could also give you an upper hand when dealing with Proof you have the unions involved. We already have suspicious suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. Okay, I made up my mind about the smuggling investigations. Yeah. The two might even be connected. Or not. Though, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. We should come to the RCM earlier. We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. We know the company has launched its own probe into the union's alleged involvement. We also know it's gone up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. Alright. Yes? Yep. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. Yeah, I talked to two of them. Third one wouldn't it talk to me. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. Uh, you're on a boat. Why, yes I am. Not a lot of uh, people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Archipelago? We are on Le Caillou, are we not? Though we're in Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Oh, I'm getting info. See anyone sell a boat around here? Seen anyone else drive a souped-up Capri Kenema motor carriage either? Fair enough. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. <laughs> Good job, Kim. Crossing long distances in the Greater Revacho Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this a toy. I mean, it's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revacho between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. <laughs> Why? Wait, what? Stop thinking. Take her down. Come off like I'm envious I'm not. <laughs> You're not. Okay then. Just keep on admiring the boat then. I'm burdened by envy. 
Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. Okay, what kind of boat it's is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. How do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Uh huh. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. <laughs> Good. All right, enough about the boat. Um, you still want to give me a lowdown on this reality that we're in? This reality. Yes, reality is your side case, an experimental side case. I'm conducting a personal investigation of the world I find myself in. It's related to the medical episode and I have some trouble remembering even the most basic terms of reality. Uh, <laughs> ah. Yeah, yes. that's, that's from the episode. episode. Sounds like an acute case of encephalopathy now that I think of it. Mm -hmm. Don't be fake, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be here a while then. Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right. We're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? Uh, where are we? We're in Martinez, baby. And what's in Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbor, north of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Tell me about Marnais. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before. As a teenager. Not a lot has changed. The ruins... The terminal, terminal fishing, fishing boats, boats reeds... reeds. Boys with boxy shoulders. Okay. As I told you, Martinez used to be a province. A workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its part. Now the reeds are the real star of the show here. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. Sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. So we're near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean, the world's largest body of water, the Insulindic. Known to the early river Sholians as Les Immensites Le, the Blue Immensities. Interesting. Stay on the island. Caillou, as you already know. Imagine a pebble, a smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river, on the sixth branch, the Martinez distributary. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her, and to humanity at large. Okay, it's Martinez. What's Revachol? Revachol? Revachol is what you call a city. Okay, what kind of city? The great kind. What makes it great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. Who built it? The nations of the Occident, or migrant workers from Seminine and Il Marah, depending on your creed. Oh, uh, when was it built? In the DeLorean century. 380 years ago. Why will it resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean conflicts, ideological conflicts, the stuff of men. Why here? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island able to sustain up to 200 million people in the middle of the Insulindic Ocean, the world's connected tissue. It's where the money is. So we're an unimportant part of an unimportant place. We're at the center of the world. So we're on the periphery, basically nobodies. It's 
speak for yourself, officer. I'm well known in certain parts. As to the place, you're right. We are. Points to the water where the skyscrapers rise. 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government in Silindian Mission Command. Silence. She lowers her head. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. Where are we? I don't know any of this. Say nothing. She observes your eyes. Jamais vu. Horizon. Another thought then game. breaks the silence. Slowly. This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask about even more fundamental aspects of reality. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. <laughs> You're right, Lieutenant. It's better not to eat all your candy at once. Indeed. I'm always at your service. Think of something close to you. Oh, God. Reach for something fundamental. Uh, not yet, maybe. That's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Of course, Detective. Take care. Alright, let's get that thought conceptualized. Ooh, uh. Shaw Special Administrative Region, the Caillou, Slight Ocean, Derealization. Something's wrong. You feel like a kid looking at stickers on the stickers on the fridge. Wait, how do I? Hold on. Yeah, I want to internalize. Oh. Can I only... Hold on, I'm confused. Can I not internalize that right now? Internalization requirement, unlock a new slot. Oh, yeah, I can't right now. How do I unlock a new slot? Ah, uh, shit, okay. Kim, we need to get into these apartments. Because they might be mine. I'm not sure. Smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. This could be the back entrance. How do I get around the back? <laughs> ah, Kim. What do? Still can't go in there, I don't think. Really like to get in, but I don't know how. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance. Kim, talk to me. Yes.
I want to talk about you. Me? Yeah. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Work better if we have more rapport. Come on, Lieutenant, open up a little. Ah, <sighs> if you insist. What do you want to know? Um... I don't look like other people around it's here. It's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What's Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Okay, just, just curious. Seoul is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're only making it sound uninteresting. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. I'm a regular of Abashadia. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. No, I don't. Glasses are cool. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. You could use a good, normal beer yourself. <laughs> I'm failing checks. This isn't good. Uh, <laughs> you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? Eh, you know when you're thinking, do you ever have like conversation with like your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. So how to, you know, saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. Fair enough. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. Oh, thanks, electrochemistry. What's the secret about no. yourself? Go on. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. <laughs> What's happening? Something the matter, detective? What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. Ah, oh, shit. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow. And you seem to regain control of yourself. Good. Let's change the subject. Uh, tell me about the case again. What do you want to know? Go to the preliminary info. You mean like a brief? Do you want me to brief you again? I'll wing There's it. There's no reason to wing anything. If three days ago, <laughs> the RCM emergencies desk received a report. But the security, security guard, guard found Haynes, Thomas Collar said there's dead and body. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him. Yeah, make cool. Okay then. Was there anything else you wanted to know? Got all I need. Good. You seem to be following Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, just an observation. You I like have him. A, a distinctive way of working. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st Precinct tend to move a bit erratically. Yeah? <laughs> they say it's a scene-clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Why containers? I don't know. Containers contain, I guess. I'm making assumptions. We should move on. Alright. I don't know what to do now then. I really do look like a homeless man just running around. Uh, okay. I need a map of this place. Let's check the bookstore for a map. Pate. Uh, I don't know what that one's about. Badero culture. 
Talk about the future. Hmm. Interesting. What? Man from Heimdall in the wildfire. Interesting. Yeah, let's see if we can find a, a map or a, a good book. I don't know. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Oh, what's this? Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. What's the cage-like trinket? You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. I'm sorry, what the fuck? This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, oh. and other supernatural scourges. Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme the Seminine Islands, down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. What's the behind these nothing. curtains? Why aren't you browsing the books? Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Okay, uh-huh. enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Just as I'm gonna pull, to pull the curtains. Up the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Well, psychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Uh... Is this about the curse? Man, this is different. I'm a police officer. Oh, it's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. What the curse? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond this threshold. My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Alright, I'll think about it for a while. Thank you. Let's just talk about this first, alright? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Oh, I need to know now. It's always good. Go see what she has to say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. For now, we'll look at some books. I'm going to talk to you about the curtains in a little bit. First, I need a map of the place. Books of molten candy. Old sports magazines, Wendell Corner. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by we're out related merchandise. Uh huh, interesting. Uh, all about trout, okay. Still, still need a map. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Crime look, fiction look, look, look is a for disgrace. It. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday oh. work of actual police officers. Oh, okay. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work. Glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officers' family. 
Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Oh God, no! Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly. Uh, Tome of Fascist Magic. <laughs> Quaint picture book brochure, very colorful. The plaque on the shelf reads: Biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names. None of which ring a bell. Uh, let's look. All the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just babbit egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, The Tragic True Love Story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. Oh yeah? High Speed Love. Chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. Oh! One is the mad cat driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Holy fuck! Next to that, River Sholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. Mm -hmm. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. Shut up, Plaisance. I'm sorry, I didn't... I'm investigating. Browsing. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. But one of his eyeballs, huh? Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. Get, I need a map, yeah. By small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachon, and a map of Martinez. Hey, can I buy these maps? Sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And they're quite valuable. Though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is Martinez so cheap? Thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened there? They didn't get that far. For some reason. A shame the project never got going. Jesus. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Yeah, I'll buy it for 90 cents. It's always good to be informed of your surroundings. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab in your inventory. Alright. What else is here? This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranormal literature. Let's look Amidst at it. the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. Yes. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Uh huh. How's that it work? Serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, oh. unity. Balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Say the anything book else? It features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And there's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gall bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. 
pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. All right. Boring book, just discarded. All right. Well, that was the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. Yep, that's also true. All right, so we've got the map. And why? Oh, triangles to interact. Yeah. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year forty-eight resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through Your the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Saint Vizelay and Rue Saint Sipar, over Saint Brune, and Martinez North. Okay. Finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and select the map tab. Ah, so we have our map tab, finally. Yes! Uh... Huh. Okay. It... interesting. And welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Talk to me I about the curtains. Told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. It's just a storage room, then why does it have a him and he's ward protecting it. <laughs> Just for decoration. Mouth pressed to tight lips, smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Uh... How do the, the curse, curse manifest? It is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Uh huh. A curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Y yeah. Everyone I'm confused. All the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy. And their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. So let me take the case I could investigate if the curse is real. Why'd you just tell me right away? Talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void raves angers them. Uh -huh. Wow, void raves. You have new words. Uh, just not helping yes. anyone. I contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. Mm -hmm. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is the pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this! No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Uh huh. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales. Fifteen percent! There's a yeah. shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Would you like me to take the case? Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. 
My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para detective. Convince her to let you investigate the Doom commercial area. Time to find no! the old lie machine. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm a renowned private investigator, a paragon of law specialist in all things criminal. And I am his private partner, John. Shaw. Together we run the preeminence for the surveillance firm in Ravasha. Shaw is what the Sao-like Empire was called in the Occident, back when far less was known about the people. It was a barbarian other, ever so mystical, on whom we could project any kind of exotic fantasy. The legend of it persists, and a lot of people still think the Shao is a thing. We are truly private in our partnership, but wait, there's Once more. Once we our clients' powers in flagrante delicto, we blackmail them and pocket the money ourselves. Because that's what private investigators do. Now, I see that you are a married woman. Some penetrated sarcasm from your colleague there. What nonsense are you two going on about? This is not relevant at all. And besides, my husband would never do such a thing. We are proper people. Mind your manners, John. This isn't the Great Show Empire where you can talk about sex stuff so openly. <laughs> All right, enough nonsense. Point is that we sometimes take on unusual cases. How can I believe you after all that foolishness? Our sincere apologies, man. No more nonsense. We are offering to assist you with your troubles. Pro bono. It's a good offer, man. Urge you to accept our help. Maybe the only chance to save your business. That's right. When not spying on the love affairs of the ultra rich, we solve unusual mysteries by the long road. <laughs> what better way than to oh ask my us? God. Will you stop with that incessant yammering? It's too much. If you wanted the key to the back door, you would have just asked for it. Hmm. Absolutely Can we have the key? Not. Ah, shit. Ah, uh, shit. Farewell for now, book peddler. I. J <sighs> the curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you. All right, hold on. <laughs> Let's save our game. I need to know. I need to know. The curtains tattered with age. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. I warned you, you're unleashing forces beyond your understanding. Yeah. Goes to silhouettes of hair dryers. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. What is that? Andraja's portrait of a man. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Knock on it. Only echo. No one is there. Man, fuck it. Oh, god damn it. Whose moronic idea was it to just run through the door? Don't you know that things like that hurt? Is that... Is that blood I'm seeing? I don't want anyone to see me cry! <laughs> Are you alright? This looks... pretty intense and painful, I must admit. What is going on there? Are you really trying to break down the back door? I warn you, don't tempt the spirits, officer! Don't tempt the spirits, or you'll damage the holy wards on the door. It barely looks like you've done any damage to the door, however. It's still locked and closed, covered in dozens of little charms and tricks. Oh, God. Can I, like... I want to try again. <laughs> I need to know. 
I need to break down this door. <laughs> Let me break down the door, Everything madam. The missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semini's trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. How are we feeling today? Good. <laughs> I passed, but it still hurt. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? <laughs> door shout, fuck the system. Smashing door shout, freeze turd bags. Shout, hands up now. Shout, fuck it hurts. And fuck the system. <laughs> I must know what is beyond the door. What is this place? It's an adventure. <laughs> it's the netherworld beyond the veil. It's like a gym to me. I did not dig him. My head hurts and it hurts bad. <laughs> it's like a gym to me. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. There's a reason why no one's been here for ages. Let's keep going. I'm sure it's a regular band house. Nothing mysterious here. There's a reason. Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for a supernatural explanation. But I want I ghosts! Do. Now let's move on, shall we? Alright, uh, how do we square? That's right. Yeah, there we go. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Shot put ball. Post says Sidious Fortis rest is worn off. When at wall bars, they do not look safe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. I'm gonna heal myself before there I do that. No collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. <laughs> Lift it. Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. Kind of bastard. We just remove the collars. That should be a felony. <laughs> it would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Hmm. Damn it. I want to lift it. What's here? It was blocked by old window pieces or window panes and debris. Interesting. Ooh. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. All animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. The... The the cafeteria manager was fucking with a stuffed animal. Airship rotors covered in spider webs that remind you of blades. The hell is this place? Oh, three dollars. Naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow color. Blue velvet. Soft to the touch, moth bitten. Money. I don't like this music. This appears 
supposed to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The radio computer? Just sitting here without anyone inside. Huh. What he means is that these things cost money. Why would anyone just leave it behind? Think I should turn it on? We had one of these down in the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Let's turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look it's inside. Empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Press play. Nothing happens. Press print. Nothing happens. Let's play again. Nothing happens. Interesting. It's amazing that the woman hasn't come this yelling at us yet. is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cajun mosaic tiles. Very percentage. Hold on, how do I know what Cajun mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles look beautiful in the sun. Okay. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for Unclear. what? It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Ah, the anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. If it's a game, then who's Whoever playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. What's that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Mm hmm. What is this? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These drawings? Pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Did I stumble upon an old D&D game? Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. You should adopt one of those Welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a Welkin. Thanks, Drama. One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. This is important. It's Vara Hamira. A high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non-Welkin races will be purged. Uh, oh, the okay. Hamidor, the Tuorg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Who are these creatures and who drew them? Are they real? One of them is a Welkin supremacist. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Uh, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. 
Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Aha, uh -huh, meta. Just look at those details. So much effort. The but photo the photos depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oilries built into glaciers, boreal dwarf, yurts under the snow, great mammoth like beasts of burden. Mm -hmm. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like Echno or Morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. I feel that. The pinned postcard reads The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. What As happened? time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Hmm. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. How interesting. I really do feel like we stumbled on somebody's D&D game. Uh, okay, what do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Just a failed business. What the hell are they making? Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. Yeah, I think it's just a yes, failed business. That is the question. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Yeah, D and D. People were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Wait, they were making a video game? Oh shit! Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> they make automated games in Gard, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. Yeah, are they planning on doing that? Stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. How cool! Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller coin stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. And this is a role-playing game? Those well kings are a dead giveaway. The role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We Were Board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... It was just a play to cheat money out of the investor's pockets. <laughs> Curse got him. Say no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Do we have any money? Let's give them more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger. Curse got him. Ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. Okay, let's keep moving. How fun. Slipstream. Slipstream. Filament memory. Oh! I could put the filament memory in the box, I bet.
No, wait, hold on. There we are. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Put in the production With schedule. A smooth draw. The filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned horn until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Dr. Accident on the this is East Insulinian Repeater Station. Uh, please repeat. Is this the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Okay. Oh. Right, okay. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. Really bad at passwords. Can I get a hint? A hint system is not part of the protocol of <laughs> stations. Is it my birthday? This is the police. Please open the I thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder such as accident without filing a weapons with LinkedIn. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? Hmm. I don't know. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. First place, Aftidon. Is there anything else I can do for you today? She called me Fortress Fort Accident. Uh, any other information about this company? Catalog. Oh, okay. That's not bad. So conceptual. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, that's all Thank for now. You and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Nothing. Press print. Oh, okay. No, but developers must advance RPG in the universe. <laughs> what a cool little find. I did not expect to just, like, I like to be able to just break down doors and shit, but these finds, these finds are fun. Now here... I don't know what the fuck is even here. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. A bear fridge? It looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? It looks like a the giant ice bear. Doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Yeah, what's the in here? The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Kim, it's fridge. Course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. Fucking Kim's as weird as me, and I love that. Let's take a look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachon Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. 
take the note from you the door. Get the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. You had some magnets. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Okay. Um, Good what's this fridge. doing here? It looks like an ice cream fridge. Try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore. Fortunate marketing choice. What is even worse? The bear is still costing them money to this day. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Interesting. So there's a shot put ball that I picked up. Uh, handwritten note from the fridge. Let's look at the it. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Yeah, let's read Someone it. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere. <laughs> Not Kuno! You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Wonder who wrote that? Someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. They had to leave in a hurry, a maybe. Um, you litter ginger kid. I think it's Kuno. Really? You don't have a single guess. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory, even if he doesn't know what to do with it. It's probably tried to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Where is that frozen ice cream maker? I, don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. All right. Wait, what? What was that? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Uh. Is this a Looks furnace? Like Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Uh, let's it's look inside. Dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? I think you can hear someone Wait, talking. Really? You should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Oh, there's the ice cream maker. Strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Ooh. Let's see if we can find our way in there. There we are. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the pipping. They look inoperable. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. There's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? I the do. The reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Inspect Most the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bulk action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Hey, this one looks okay. It's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. <laughs> Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Yeah? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this fight. Nice. 
Someone stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Very cool. Good find. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Well, that's gotta have the. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. This code, right? It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. You slip your fingers crack under open the, the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand. Ah, uh, very good. Equip the pry bar by going to the tools tab in your inventory. From there, you can equip it to a held slot. Alright, let's do that. Instead of the bag... Uh... This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream chip. Pry bar not strong enough. Freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Let's crank Turning it then. the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water. Dream. Well, I could try and do it. I mean, I've got a 1 in 12 shot. The ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well. But the lid simply won't budge. Yeah. You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it. But this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advance to, to get it open. Or get one of those. I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. Then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. <laughs> Alright. Fair enough. Take those. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Let's unplug the black cable, then. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Color of the immeasurable the cosmos. Raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. Well, I want the ice to melt, right? A insane mesh tank top. Ooh, Let's check her out. How do we... Uh, plus one drama. Clinically insane. It's plus one conceptualization, though. But I like the drama. <laughs> Let's put that on for the drama. And keep exploring. This is fun. This is a fun adventure that we're going on right now. Oh, and we're back here. Interesting. I'm gonna re equip that plastic bag. East Delta Commerce Center. This must be the name of the Doom commercial area. I never actually looked at these. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Trudeau, please stop calling here. Grown ups don't have time for your stupid game. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? <laughs> Uh, uh <laughs> Fuck off, pig. I'm Kuno. I don't give a shit. Mother? Let me in. This is not Kuno. Who is it? Please just stop calling here. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. 
What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. Boxing and young athletes in gym. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. 24th you window. the doorbell, but nothing happens. Emma's fashion atelier. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. No one answers the call. Uh... Looks the taxi? Like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Slipstream. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver but isn't saying anything. Hello? Yes, hello. This is Frank from Millennial Electric. Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique. As if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working. We were just there though, right? Wait, but what happened to Slipstream SCA? There's no tricentennial electrics on the list. I've been inside this building, but I didn't see anyone from Tricentennial Electronic Electrics. This place is deserted. Oh my god. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. It's a woman, and she knows you. What? Your heart beats faster. She must be mistaking you for someone else. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. Who are you? Where are you? Do we know each other? What's going on? A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. Still there? Silence. The only thing you could hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What? Seagull <laughs> it's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. All right, you goodbye press then. the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Slipstream SCA. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and all right. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. <laughs> Oblivion's the ace in your corner. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside. Yes, hello. I think you've got me mixed with someone else. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. Don't don't hang up. I want to explain myself. It's you. Oh my God. Wait. Is she? Did you already say it the last time we talked? Stop it already, stop repeating your words. It doesn't matter what I say, you're just gonna continue, right? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again. Correct. Can we talk now? Oh, you're she recording. Again <laughs> to cry and still 
doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant, as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Why does it still feel like my fault? Her sound melts into the static from a long distance phone call. From time to time, you can hear people talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. The phone rings in the office with an old-fashioned chime, and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. No one there? Replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total somehow. Crawling inside your head. Her words are too cold to comprehend. She smells of sodium lights and rain streaks on car windows. Eyes like pilot lights watch your shape in dark hallways. Gutter. Oh. So. Uh. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. This is recording trapped in circuitry. No, I don't have time to explain it to you right now. Maybe sometime later. So weird. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, something weird is almost always happening to you. Fair enough. That is true. Um, fortress Silence. accident. No one's home at Fortress Accident. Yeah. Revachal Ice City. No one answers the doorbell. The whirling rags. Pinball. Silence. No one answers your call. Empty. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. <laughs> Let's try and contact Nothing the whirling and rags. After you ring the doorbell, they don't want to talk to you. Dang it. <laughs> All right, let's level up. Um, hmm. I like the drama. Oh my god, my authority is one. <laughs> Savior fare is zero. Sneak under their noses, stun with immense panache. Oh man. Composure's fine though. I want to. Uh, pain threshold. Be probably pretty good to bump that up, right? Endurance, take the blows, don't let the world kill you. Would that increase my uh, mental? Fortitude? Let's find out. It does. Good shit. Third wall, conceptualization, empathy, legendary. Save your fair, challenging for the policeman cloak. Everything's yeah, legendary or challenging or heroic. How do I unlock a new slot? That's what I want to know. Let's go back to the whirling rags. I'm just gonna try and go back up to my room and see what happens. <laughs> oh, what is going on here? Can I help you? Oh, Gart. Goodbye, Gart. What's, uh, what is going on here? Police work is tough. Take breaks, talk to strangers, explore. That's what I've been doing the entire time.
I can still come in here, which is nice. <laughs> and gather all the bottles from my bender. Kim tries not to look at your broken down bathroom door. Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tech viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. I did it my way. This is where the magic like happens. Crimes against humanity. Yeah, crimes against myself anyway. I defied bourgeoisie morality in here, defied it hard. Expression of me, my individualism. Well, crimes against I myself no anyway. <laughs> oh my god, there are so many bottles here. Oh, uh, wait. Yeah, that's the window. Can I, like, pass out here? The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 2100. Gotcha. Wait, what's... Oh yeah, the rifle! That's right. So, I guess I want to talk to the door. You is again, closed. maybe. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere. Side. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. The door is mute and indifferent. Your despair is a joke to it. But still, no answer. Much but harder. Still, nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. <laughs> we're, not, we're not. We're not doing that right now. <laughs> I would like to find my gun and my badge, of which I have neither. I can't believe we're this far and I have no idea where it is. But hey, at least the nightlife is alive. I can talk to you. Let's do that. Let's talk to you. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eye with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Pretty long. It's drink o'clock. Attaboy. It's coming back to him. You had your mesolimbic reward pathway worried there. Not thinking about drinking all that time. It was like you weren't yourself. Actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hadn't turned out too well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade into yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. Don't lick it. What happened, man? You used to be... <laughs> Go get your boring normal person drink, man. Oh, the Jesus the Christ, electrochemistry. That's a great combination. It's all about money, you know? Get good talk. Guard, I want a drink. Can I help you? Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this... Is this a shaker? It's not a shaker. It's nothing. He's holding nothing. It is but an imitation. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie and doing this? Am I smiling? 
Do you see me smiling and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? You're not a bartender? That's right. I'm the cafeteria manager. Oh my god. I'm glad we cleared that. Is there anything else? Play it calm. This man needs to understand. <laughs> You need a drink to help the community deal with police. I'm an alcohol operator detective. You want me to clean up the dead body and solve the case, and you need to insert alcohol into my mouth. Oh, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of a glass or a pineapple? Do not want to taunt me now when it comes to marinellas. Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you a marinella. I have work to do and broken things to fix. If that was all, I'd like to return to it. God damn it, Gart. <laughs> God damn it, Gart. Oh, I have so many tasks. Are we not done inspecting the body? Because I still want to ask him about the pissing competition. Kuno, are you still here? There, he still is. Looking right through you. With his white eyes, the body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Let go of your nose without throwing up? Uh, let's try it. The Obviously not. It is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind. Flushing you from within. Uh, let's try and walk away. No, nope, we can't do it. Oh, let it out, detective. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out. Burst by burst. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet. And your throat stings from the stomach acid. Fucking corpse. Give it. Uh, thank you. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Where we get ammonia from? That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for the smell. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the fridge store nearby. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Mmm, I see. I'm gonna try and go get my coat again, though. Maybe now that I've thought about jumping and getting the coat, I can actually go and get the coat. I just hope all these tasks don't disappear after the day is over. That would be, uh, unfortunate. Three T's. Oh, idiomatic. How again do I... Oh yeah, climb up this. That's right. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Still not right now. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, let's see if we can refine that gardener. I shit. I wish I would have known that uh re trying these checks would lead to more tasks and whatnot. Or failing these checks rather. I don't know where Frida is either. Oh wait, I might know where Frida is. Don't be afraid to say weird things. People are more forgiving to persons of power, like police officers. That's me, hobo cop. And maybe the gardener has some on her right now. Is she still out here? She is. Hello again, officer. How are Sure. I'm done with them. Oh, thank you. So easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Alright, 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 alright. Let's examine the body again. There, he still is. Looking right through you. Do I need to use it? Non-interactable. But I do have it. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below. No, it's only a plus one because I have the ammonia. To that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Yeah, we can go ahead and try again. The ammonia only makes it worse. Jesus. The combination forces tears out of your guts. He managed to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your uh, chest is God. Well. Ah, uh, spit and say nothing. Are you okay, officer? You're facing tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a cop. I've seen cat tanks puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cut of a day. Throw it. Investigate. Throw it. Initial autopsy. Throw it. Bag it. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. A white lie. Not being hungover helps too. Uh. Can we do something else? I think I want to solve something else now. That's probably a good idea. Clear our head. But before we can do that, you need to get your shit together. Yeah. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it with special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Oh, I've got thoughts I want to internalize. But I don't have space. I need space for thought. Mazovian socioeconomics. 